are we ready for some Dennis Prager? We're going to read we're going to read one of the cringiest articles by Dennis by the cringiest anything that Dennis Prager has ever done. Uh this is an old one from the old days, from the archives. This is from the old year of 2008. We're going to gaze into the past. But first, I want us all to appreciate the the old Dennis Prager icon. Just look at that. Isn't that a isn't that an incredible fucking icon? You got to love it. You got to fucking love it. A big fat DP right here. I got to go like this. I got to go like this and go boop. There we go. Everybody loves some DP, right? Yeah, this is the old Dennis Prager show. Remember how we were talking about how Dennis Prager um had a uh uh Dennis Prager had a um uh, a radio show? Well, this is this is it. And this is from it. Are you ready? Are you ready for some atomic level cringe? I'm not. Wait a minute. I mean, yes, I am. All right, here we go. Ready? This is titled, When a Woman Isn't in the Mood, Part 1, by Dennis Prager. I think we can already say this is some pretty, uh, pretty yikers. Yikes. Yep. I, I tried to tell you. I try to tell you, this is one of the cringiest things that, that anything is so, and Prager, the god of cringe, has put out in 2008, of course. This is an old one, you know, back before he was a bigwig on YouTube. Is it a war crime? I, well, I got no choice. It looks like we're going to war, it's war crime time, baby. <laughs> it's so bad. This article is so bad. Here we go. Ready? Here we go. All right. Enough with it. With no further ado. Here we go. Given our preoccupation with politics and economics, it's easy to forget that our that for most of us, micro issues still play a greater role in our lives. So here are some thoughts that, as heretical as they might sound, have found I've found have been found extremely helpful. Sometimes even marriage saving from listeners to my radio show, which features a male female hour every week. Fee- Emails. The subject is one of the most common problems that besets marriages. The wife who is not in the mood and the constantly frustrated and hurt husband. Uh-oh. There are marriages with the opposite problem. A wife who is frustrated and hurt because her husband is rarely in the mood. But as important and destructive as that problem is, it has different causes and different solutions and, solutions, and is therefore not addressed here. That is the most gender essentialist shit. Yeah, this is my wife boomer humor, basically. Yeah. No, no. No true leveler. They don't even have a dedicated female hour. It's the male dash female hour. Yeah, it's the male female hour. What? <laughs> so yeah, by the way, uh so what is addressed here is the far more common problem of he wants, she doesn't want. Ah! This you couldn't find a worse way to word that. He wants, she doesn't want. You know what that means? That means he don't get. That's what that means. That's what that means. There's a thing called consent. And most people believe in consent. But Dennis Prager, well, it's a little bit complicated. See, consent is a little complicated for Dennis Prager, as we're going to find out. Yikes. True, retcon. True. It's an axiom of contemporary marital life that if a wife is not in the mood, she need not have sex with her husband. True. Yes, that's the way it should be. As it turns out, you shouldn't have sexual ownership over another person. That's an absolutely terrible thing. Oh, no, no, Puff, no. But that is what that's probably what we're going to bump into here. Here are some arguments why a woman who loves her husband might want to rethink this axiom. First, women need to recognize how a man understands a wife's refusal to have sex with him. A husband knows that his wife loves him first and foremost by her willingness to give her body to him. What the fuck? Okay, can you, like, 
Look at this. A husband knows that his wife loves him first and foremost by her willingness to give her body him. What a fucking horrific way to view the world. The only way that a woman can show love to a man is by giving her body to him. That is literally like not even that's like that's like even even fucking like cavemen didn't think that even fucking cavemen had a concept of love. Dennis Prager literally doesn't believe in love. He literally thinks that that love is equivalent to a woman being willing to fuck you. That's love. If not, no, it's not love. You heard it from the fucking horse's mouth. This is rarely the case for women. Few women know their husband loves them because he gives her his body. The idea sounds almost funny. Why? Why is that funny? That makes no sense. This is therefore usually a revelation to a woman. Many women think that men's natures are similar to theirs, gender essentialism. And this is so different from a woman's nature that few women knew, know about this unless uh, know this about men unless told about it. A fly came in. Yeah, they don't share. They just give. Yeah, this is like, this is incredibly deeply, mis this is what, this is literally what toxic masculinity is, by the way. This is what is referred to when the term toxic masculinity is known. It's a type, it's the type of masculinity that hurts both men and women. Toxic masculinity, it, it like, some people hear the term toxic masculinity and they think that it means, oh, all masculinity is toxic. No, toxic masculinity specifically is a term designed to aim and point out uh, to aim at and point out stuff like this. Imagine going through your life being taught by people like Dennis Prager that the only the only proof that your wife loves you is if she'll fuck you. What like do you, can you imagine how many situations that would be bad? Like what if your wife is sick? Does she just stop loving you because she's feeling sick? What a horribly repressive and a, and and torturous way to live your life. Anyway, this is a major re reason many husbands clam up. A man whose wife frequently desires, denies him sex will first be hurt, then sad, then angry, then quiet. Ah, yes, men should just stop emotionally connecting with their wife if their wife doesn't constantly want to have sex with them. Most men will never tell their wives why they have become quiet and distant. They are afraid to tell their wives. Coward. They are often made to feel ashamed of their male sexual nature. And they are, they are humiliated, indeed emasculated, by feeling that they are reduced to having to beg for sex. Holy, holy shit. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. Of course, Redcon. Yeah, it suggests that men should always be ready for sex. And if they're not, if they're not constantly hungering for sex, they're somehow broken. As if that's reality. As if it's not completely true that there are many men who don't want to have sex all the time. Men can have real internal trauma being told that. Absolutely. 100%. You're 100% right. Yeah. Programming. The male bots have come online. When first told about this, when first told this about men, women generally react in one or more of five ways. One, you have to be kidding. I'm going to do a super femoid voice. You have to be kidding. That certainly isn't my way of knowing if he loves me. There have to be deeper ways than sex for me to show that my husband that I love him. Two, if this is true, men really are animals. Three, not my man. Not my man. He knows I love him by the kind and loving way I treat him. Four, you have it backwards. If he truly loved me, he wouldn't expect sex when I'm not in the mood. True. Number four is 100% true. Five, I know this and that's why I rarely say no to sex. Yikes. Let's deal with each of these responses. Yeah, I was, I was literally just about to make that exact face puff. Holy shit. <sighs> One, you have to be kidding. The most common female reaction to hearing about men's sexual nature is incredulity, often followed by denial. These are entirely understandable reactions given how profoundly different and how seemingly more primitive men's sexual nature is compared to women. Okay, dude. 
Incredulity is, a, is certainly the reaction most women have when first being told that a man knows he is loved when his wife gives him her body. The idea that the man she is married to, let alone a man whose intelligence she respects, will to any serious serious extent measure her love of him by such a carnal yardstick strikes many women as absurd and even objective objectionable that's because it is absurd and objectionable prager holy fucking shit yeah true but the question that should matter to a woman who loves her man is not whether this proposition speaks poorly or well of male nature it's whether it is true this is literally just men are stupid beasts and deal with it all of this in just all of this. Keep in mind that all of this bullshit religious ideology, this like religiously based ideology is invented just so that 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 Dennis Prager can cry can try and do the mental gymnastics necessary to justify why he feels his wife should never be able to say no to him. And in fact, no man's wife should ever be able to say no to him. Yeah, it also true, figurative, figuratively nobody. I hadn't even touched on that yet, which is like this, this totally removes the um, it, it removes women entirely from the from the equ equation. Women aren't even seen as sexual agents here. They don't have women must not have sexual desire. They all are just constantly opposed to having sex with their man. Maybe they, maybe sex with their man sucks. Maybe their guy should get better at sex and the and their wife will want to have sex more. That's a possibility. Maybe they should have maybe they should have married somebody who had a more comparative sex drive to them. That's always a possibility. Maybe they should open up their relationship, have a poly thing. That's a cool thing too. Yeah, that is the <laughs> true Zanzi. Extremely true. Here's the conservatives problem. They think women just don't want to have sex with them. They don't want to have sex. No, it's actually that they don't want to have sex with them. True. It's true beyond anything she can imagine. So it's whether it's true. Yes, it is true. Amazing, amazing fucking writing here. Fucking uh, Dennis Prager. Uh, is it true? Yes, it is true. Where's the evidence? Don't need it. It's just true. I'm just saying it. A woman who often deprives her husband of her body. It. This is so sickening. This is actually like this wording here actually makes me slightly sick. Like, unironically. Like, a woman who often deprives her husband of her body, you have deprived me of your body. You will be punished. That's so fucked. Is guaranteed to injure him and injure the marriage. Listen to this fragility. This is male fragility. This is what people say when they say male fragility. Um, Saying no to your husband injures your husband. Say, you're not giving your husband free reign to do with your being, with the body that is yours, your own body, whatever he wants, whenever he wants, injures your husband. Holy shit. The carnal yardstick. Yup, Mariner. Yeah, this is monstrous. That's why I told you. This is like nuclear cringe. This is unfathomably pain, like painful to read. But we're going to read it because that's what we do. Because we need to realize, remember who we're dealing with. No matter what her female friends say, no matter what a sympathetic therapist says, and no matter what her man says, this is like fucking hyper gaslighting, un unironically. No matter what her friends say, no matter what a therapist says, and no matter what even her own husband says. A woman who often deprives her husband of her body is injuring him and injuring the marriage. And even if her man says otherwise, she should still feel bad about it. This is terrible. Very few men will confess to the amount of hurt and eventual anger they experience when repeatedly denied sex. No, that's just you, Prager. There are plenty of men who are not only one able able and willing to confess feeling hurt but also to analyze that and realize that maybe they shouldn't feel hurt by something as simple as their wife not feeling in the mood for sex at that moment this is just you this is just you prager of course there are times when a man must simply refa refrain from initiating se sex out of concern for his wife's physical or emotional condition yep hey look at that spectrum melodies we're getting to the hysteria 
And then there are men for whom sex rarely has anything to do with making love or whose frequency of demands are excessive. What excessive means ought to be determined by the couple before refusals begin or continue. Listen to this. Women aren't even, even able to have their own definition of, of excessive. It has to be approved and signed off by the husband. What the fuck? The fact remains, your man knows you love him by your willingness to give him your body. Damn. I guess my guess having sex with my wife might kill her, so maybe I should lay off the night for her own good. If this is true, yeah, I know. I told you. I warned you all. Look at the preamble. I know you didn't you weren't here for this, Marinara, so I can't really blame you. But I tried. I tried to warn. I put up one of those things that, that they put on the nuclear like the nuclear waste sites that are like nothing good is found here. Yeah. Oh, I, I feel you, Redcon. It gets worse. If this is true, men really are animals. Correct. There you have it. Need we read more? Yes. Compared to most women's sexual nature, men's sexual nature is far closer to that of animals. So what? That's the way he is made. Blame God and nature. Holy shit. Blame God and nature. You heard it here. Brett Dennis Prager ordering you to, to commit sacrilege. Telling your husband, wage war against God if you don't like it. That's why they call me Demon Mama. Yeah, this is really... Oh, this is... Oh, retcon. This is 100% rape apology. This is this is rape culture in action. This is what... When, when people talk about rape culture, this is rape culture. And this is shockingly common... This is a shockingly common thought path in certain areas of America. Not just in certain among certain groups in America. <laughs> oh oh god, Faye, be careful. You got to go talk to the beast. Telling your husband to control it is a fine idea, but he already does. Every man who is sexually faithful to his wife already engages in daily heroic self-control. Holy shit. Every man who is sexually faithful is is exercising heroic self-control. Dennis Prager thinks so horrifically low of men. It's painful. This is so painful. He thinks that men are so simple and weak that they literally cannot engage in sexual faithfulness with their wives because they are they are so bestial and and and, and sex hungry that they, that they must be a hero if they so much as even ma maintain the vows of the marriage they chose to get into he has married knowing he will have to deny his sexual nature's desire for variety for the rest of his life to ask that he also regularly deny himself sex with one woman in the world with whom he is permitted to have sex is asking far too much. Deny him enough times and he may try to fill his need with another woman. That's right, women. You heard it here. Dennis Prager believes that you are, the, you are to blame if your husband cheats. If your husband cheats, it's your fault because you weren't good enough. Hey, Flowery Jane, you've stumbled in. To some real danger. Oh, is that? Oh, is there a hurricane in your area? Holy shit! Please stay safe. I'm so sorry. Hopefully your power, your your the, the the storm won't do too much, and you'll still have power, and you'll still be able to um like hang out and watch and stuff. But I really just hope you stay safe. That's what matters most to me. And thanks for being here. I appreciate you coming by. Hopefully we can provide some atomic cringe for you. True spectral melodies. Maybe the husband needs a vib vibrator. If he is too moral to ever do that, he will match your sexual withdrawal with emotional and other forms of withdrawal. If you, if he's too moral to cheat on you, he will m emotionally and and physic and potentially physically abuse you because it's, and it's your fault. Ah, uh, yeah, you got some weed. Get comfy and get high. Hell yeah. Three. Not my man. Oh, before we move on to not my man, I just wanted to say, doesn't this speak to a truly oppressive and, and horrific worldview? A worldview that says that, first of all, first of all, it assumes men are beasts who have a natural desire to constantly fuck and want constant variety. And then two, 
enforces a religious structure that says that men who are beasts and must fuck must lock themselves into essentially essentially chastity by their own definition um in order to not go to hell and be punished forever oh yeah absolutely marinara keep in mind that um keep keep in mind um uh keep in mind that like people like dennis prager surround themselves with yes men they will like all of Dennis Prager's lackeys will tell him this is an awesome article, not just because they also believe in like the same basic presuppositions that he does, the same like sort of religious zealotry that he that he um, advocates for, but also because he's incredibly rich and he's powerful. So people have an incentive to say, uh-huh, and make him feel good and butter him up so that they're more likely to further their career, get raises, get promotions, move up within Prager University or Prager's talk show radio, whatever. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of like fucked up um, things like that. Yeah, absolutely, Zanzi. It, it's not even that. It's like, it's like, he portrays men as basically werewolves who um, constantly are like cursed with this desire to fuck all the time. Can you imagine? Like, I don't know. I remember being Christian and like, I'm a fairly sexual person. I'm a, I mean, these days, not as much as I used to be because uh, coronavirus and all that and a bunch of other stuff, but I'm a fairly sexual person. I used to be a very sexual person. And when I was Christian, it always felt like I was supposed to hate myself at all times. And I was supposed to engage in the these really fucked up structures that weren't designed for me at all. And then I became poly and I realized why the fuck would I, would I live my life in a structure that goes against the way that I am me being knowing that I'm a fairly sexual person. Why would I go and engage in relationships that make me feel like shit? Why would I constantly try to live to somebody else's random arbitrary standard? Because that's what they think is right and not what's right for me. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably a, a, a fair conclusion. I mean, this is like hardcore rape apologia. Like, this is the sort of shit I would expect a rapist to write. Yeah, I, I know that feeling very well, um, Spectrum Melodies. It's, uh, it's really hard. Like, religious shame is, is totally oppressive. Poly life threatens the social order. Conservatives painted themselves into a corner. True. They've always been painting themselves into a corner. Yeah, poly life sh threatens the social order by offering an alternative social order where people have the relationships that they need to have that fulfill them emotionally and they don't necessarily have to ascribe to a single type of relationship that, um, like a single type of relationship that's dictated by, by some random fucking book that was written like nine bazillion years ago. Three, not my man. Many women will argue, understandably, my husband knows I love him. He doesn't need me to have sex with him to know that. And this is especially so when I'm too tired or just don't want to have sex. Anyway, my man only enjoys sex when I'm into it too. I don't know about y'all, but who enjoys sex when their partner isn't into it? Like, I literally don't, I don't find that type of sex interesting at all, ever. Not at all. Like, if I feel like my partner is not feeling it, I will ask them and be like, hey, are you okay? Are you feeling okay? And if they're just like, oh, yeah, I'm fine, then I'm like, okay, good. And if not, I'll say, we can stop at any time. Like, this is literally grug shit. Who the fuck likes having sex with somebody who isn't into it? Except for in, like, very limited kink situations where you're, like, role-playing some kind of specific scene for some special type of kink. Like, who the fuck enjoys that? I don't know. That sounds pretty fucking rapey to me. That's pretty weird. It's grug shit. Absolutely, Windleby. 100%. Good to see you, by the way. Have you... Wait, did I not say hello to you before? I feel like I maybe forgot to say hello to you before. Yeah, talking during... Se talking with your partner? Wife? Talk? Oh, sick. That's awesome. Grats. I haven't had my eyebrows done in forever. I got to have them done some point once, once the coronavirus is clear. The importance of mutual kindness to a marriage is impossible to overstate, but while necessary, it's not sufficient. Women can understand this by applying the same rule to men. 
Most women will readily acknowledge that, that it is certainly not enough for a man to just be kind to her. If it were, women would rarely reject kind men as husband material. But as much as a woman wants a kind man, she wants more than that. Hey, thank you so much for the, for the gifted sub. Yay, thank you so much. Damn, everyone's been so fucking generous. Thank you. Holy shit. Oh, sick. Yeah. Oh, oh, plucking drives me nuts. Um, I always do threading because it's really fast, even though it's basically plucking, but really fast. It's so fast that it doesn't bother me as much, but oh shit. Like for some reason, if I try to pluck my own eyebrows, it like feels gross to me and it drives me nuts. Like it doesn't even hurt that much. It just feels weird because of the position. It makes me feel weird. That's why I always go and get like, when I have my eyebrows done, I usually go to like threading, which is also like three, like, like three to $5, depending on where you go. Yeah, it's really hard. Yeah, it is hard to do yourself. Um, Oh, sick. That's awesome. Yeah, a little, uh, now a little comb. Now that feels great. It feels so super relaxing to use a tiny little eyebrow comb. Oh, it feels so good. Oh, yeah, true. Absolutely true, Zanzi. It's a really weird, like, dehumanization thing. Um, yeah, Hacking prod, prod, Prodigy, we just read that. Ready? If this is true, men really are animals. Correct. That was easy. Bam, right here. Got you. I got you, Hacking Prodigy. You thought I was full of shit, but I wasn't. <laughs> Whoops. That's not a straw man. He literally says, if this is true, men really are animals. Correct. Compared to most women's sexual nature, men's sexual nature is far closer to that of animals. Lol, you tried. Wait, are you, wait, wait, hacking prodigy. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're not allowed to use other words that mean the same thing. Did you want me to just type out the entirety of um, Dennis Prager's article? Um as the title of my stream people some people here who have functioning brains would realize that when you name a stream title you have to name it something that makes sense to people so so they come in and hear what you're talking about and then you read them the article but if you put the exact words it becomes incredibly boring and nonsensical hacking prodigy you do not know what a straw man is you don't know what a straw man is do you want to come on to my stream and debate me? Hacking Prodigy, do you want to debate me about whether this is a straw man or not? True Puff, I don't know. I guess I'm just I guess I'm just a fucking uh, I guess I'm just a fraud. Oh, it's 3 a.m. Is it too hard for you to debate? Cause I mean you came in here real hot accusing me of straw men and stuff like that. I'm just I'm just offering. If you want to come in to my Discord, I can get you in here and we can talk. Actually, it's impossible for it to be 3 a.m. there, by the way. You just lied. You just lied to me. There is nowhere in the world where it's 3 a.m. right now because currently it's 537 and time zones work on the hour. So you're lying. It is not 3 a.m. It is actually, at your time, 338 a.m. My dude, holy shit. I can't believe you would just come in here and lie. Holy shit. You just straw manned. You just straw manned at me. Straw man, straw man, ad hominem, straw man, fallacy. Get out of here. You know what, hacking prodigy, why don't you have a seat and listen to the article and then we'll continue from here. Uh, actually, oh, is that true? Is that actually true? I don't actually know that. I thought they were like all on the hour or on the half hour. Reductio ad time zonium. Reductio... <laughs> Yeah, you've committed the greatest fallacy of all. The Reductio ad ad, ad stramanium ad 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 timezonium. Oh, okay, cool. That I didn't actually know that. Am I a Cardi B fan? Um, I don't listen to I haven't listened to much Cardi B. I haven't to be fair. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't know that. Thank you for teaching me something I didn't know, True Leveler. That's cool as fuck. True. I do agree with that, Windleby, and I do agree with you on that, Ace Man. Agreed. Um, yeah, maybe I'll give it a listen after this. Um I, I haven't been listening to music. I haven't been listening to much music lately. Anyway, yes, it is true. 
Dennis Prager thinks men are beasts and that women should have to deal with it. In fact, he repeatedly makes the argument that it's essentially women's fault um, when their men cheat on them because women were bad and didn't give them access to, to her body. Oh, oh, and here we go. We're about to get into even more. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'd love that. Thank you, Retcon. Um, here we go. <clears throat> As much as a woman wants a kind man, she wants more than that. If a man is, let us say, lacking in ambition or doesn't want to work hard. Now, what is this? What? That's a weird thing to say. Hmm. Anyway, few women will love him no matter how kind he is. In fact, most women would happily give up some kindness for hard work and ambition. This is just literally justifying... Um, like men who are like hard workers this is just like a 1950s stereotype of having like a like an asshole husband who works hard and that's okay and that you should have to deal with that a kind man with little ambition is not masculine therefore not desirable to most women this is literal brainworm logic uh ambition apparently ambition is a is an only masculine trait if a woman is ambitious she must be masculine do you see how deep this like gender essentialism runs also do you realize like what prager u is built on despite the fact that prager u like tries to like tries to act like they're like a oh yeah we're conservative but that doesn't mean that we're like behind the times and yet they they pra dennis prager actively believes that ambition is an intrinsically masculine trait true he can't because he's a fucking idiot he can't define anybody's masculinity he can only define his own which is, as it turns out is a horrific cage that apparently you should be suffering in likewise here we go watch this likewise a kind woman who is not sexual with her husband is not feminine she is a kind roommate holy shit if you're if you love your wife but you're not sexual for whatever reason. You're just a roommate. Fuck being a wife. That's a roommate. This is one of the most toxic things I've fucking ever seen. Furthermore, a woman who denies the man she loves sex is not kind. So not only are you incapable of being a woman if you deny your wife, you deny your husband sex, but you are also incapable of being kind. Men are for ambitious hard work. Women are for sex and nothing else. This is one of the most dehumanizing, objectifying bullshit I've ever read. Four, you have it backwards. Every rational and decent man knows there are times when he should not initiate sex. In a marriage of good communication, a man would either know when those times are or his wife would tell him. And she needs to. Women should not expect men to read their ma minds. He is her man, not her mother. He is her man, not her mother. What? I'm confused. I don't know what this actually means. This is literally... This is literally saying that a woman should know, should speak up, but if she speaks up, she's no longer a wife. This is a distinction without a difference. This is saying, oh, if you speak up, if you speak up, you're not a woman. But if you don't speak up, you're also wrong because you should have told him. This is so bad. Oh, don't worry. It's over soon. I promise you this is almost over. But to repeat a key point, rejection of, of sex should happen infrequently, and it should almost never be dependent on mood. Then what should it be dependent on? If you're in a bad, if you're feeling bad and you can't get into sex because you're feeling bad, what the absolute fuck? Yes, this is literal abusive language. It would not surprise me. It would not surprise me at all if Dennis Prager was an incredibly abusive husband. Like, obviously... You can't just take an article with a bad take of evidence of that. But this type of uh, this type of take is very specifically um, worded with the language of abuse. Absolutely. Yeah. Apparently, it's the phases of the moon. You know, women, the the divine feminine. You know, that's what it. That's what it is. This is a true Prager U, a true Prager U marriage, probably. I know this, and that's why I rarely say no to your to your husband. This is a wise woman. 
She knows a sexually fulfilled husband is a happy husband. At the same time, men need to recognize that complete sexual fulfillment is unattainable in this world. What the absolute fuck? What a horrific... This... Okay, you know how many times... Here. You know how many times I have talked about on this channel that right-wingers are some of the most... Even the rich right-wingers are some of the most miserable people on the planet? This is the shit I'm talking about. This is the exact type of stuff I'm talking about. Men need to recognize that complete sexual fulfillment is unattainable in this world. You will be miserable. You are going to be miserable. And not only that, but we're going to put you into systems that make you miserable and make you hate your wife because it's the fucking female's fault. And because a happy husband loves his wife more, because he loves her more because she's giving him what he wants, this cycle of love produces a happy home. That's right. If you want a happy home, if you don't want to be miserable for the rest of your life, you got to put up and shut up. In part two, I will explain in detail why mood should pay little or no role in a woman's determining whether she has sex with her husband. I conclude part one with this clarification. Everything written here applies under two conditions. One, the woman is married to a good man. Two, she wants him to be a happy husband. If either condition is not present, nothing written here matters. But if you are a woman who loves your husband, what is written here can be the most important thing you will ever read because chances are the man you love won't tell you. Funny! Remember how literally just seconds ago he said, literally, within the same area, she needs to, to, she needs to. Women should not expect men to read their minds, but men should expect women to read their minds or should have Prager do it for them. This is one of the most disgustingly sexist articles I've ever read. And yes, this was from 2008, but let's be real. Dennis Prager hasn't changed even in the slightest. This is the way that Dennis Prager looks at the world. And this is the and the sad thing is, this is is how a lot of right wingers view the world. A lot of right wingers view the world in this way. It is an incredibly oppressive, sad, and pathetic worldview. And I, and this is just one more piece of evidence on the pile of me constantly saying that these weird traditionalist structures are absolutely terrible for the mental health of the people that believe in them. People who believe in a world where God fucked you over and made you a sex beast that can never be fulfilled morally without going to hell. And then also it's your wife's fault that you're not happy despite the fact that God made you a sex beast that... that uh, that God made you a sex beast and then set up a morality system that says you go to hell if you behave like a sex beast, which God made you? Oh my fucking God. Holy shit. Wait, Kim K? Who's Kim K? Wait, who's Kim K? Kim Kardashian? That's weird. That's crazy. That sucks. Sorry, I thought you I, I, I thought you were referring to somebody else somebody else for a second. I was like, wait, what? Who's Kim K? I thought you were talking about somebody else. Damn, that sucks. So yeah, kind of a depressing, kind of a depressing article, isn't it? Kind of a horrific look into the mind of a, of a, of a misogynist, of a sexist. And this is, a, again, this is the environment that I grew up in. I grew up learning stuff like this. I was taught this stuff when I was a kid. This is the sort of shit that I was taught when I was a kid. Not, not in this, not this mask off, but the same basic idea. Actually, there Actually, literally, there were literal times when this, when an almost identical uh, speech like this was taught, w would have been said to me. But most of the time, they were more uh, sneaky with it. They would go it in like, oh, a wife's, um, you know, if a wife wants to be a holy and 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 a, like a like a, a pious wife, you know, she should be willing to serve her husband as God has stated. And service of the husband means giving the body, blah blah blah. They would hide it under a couple of layers. Prager you, of course, doesn't really care for you know, hiding things away. He doesn't exactly um think twice about the things he says, as we've seen in his literal blogs. Yeah. Oh, ab oh, absolutely. Puff. Um, 99% of fucking conservative thought is just, I feel this way and I'm going to find a post hoc justification for why it's that way. It really is 
phenomenal how much conservative how much conservative like thought is based exclusively on emotions yeah i mean it's not even it's not even just i mean yeah a lot of organized religion has been hijacked by people like this but also keep in mind and and this is my one of my big critiques of organized religion is that a lot of the structures of organized religion and traditionalism and and and, and dogmatic dogmatism and zealotry those things that are closely tied with organized religion are um they're they are structures that empower people like this they're structures of dominance they're structures of hierarchy and oppression and that's why i stand against such structures now I, that doesn't mean that i believe all organized religion is necessarily bad i just think that um organized religion and depending on the religion um can be very vulnerable um to people like this it's not even that they're like that they're like um just hijacking it it's that it's almost ready made for for people like that to come in and take power and it happens constantly um i mean we've seen this over and over but but again this is just a prime example of the of the justifications they use they use justifications of 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 hierarchy that are based on basically feelings and um yeah it's uh it's pretty wild so i have one more thing i want to do on stream together we're going to watch a video and it's a great follow up to this because it's the same basic thing, the same basic mentality um, being portrayed in a very different way, in a much more friendly way. But it's the same basic implications. Let me just show you what we're talking about. Where's the video? I'm trying to find the video here. God, there's so many. Here, let me just show you what I'm scrolling through right now. Does this look, uh, does this look familiar? Do we know who this is? Does everybody know who this is? This is, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is Abby Shapiro. This is Ben Shapiro's sister. Um, and we're going to watch some of this because basically all of this is about, um, oh, here's a great one. Let's listen to this one. Here's a little short one. Let's give it a watch. I've heard, by the way, I haven't seen this one. I've seen some of classically Abby's content. Um, and I've heard that it's atrociously bad, incredibly boring. But we're going to give it a fair shake. I want to watch this video, which is titled, Ladies, Stop Hooking Up, A Jewish Wife's Message About Sex. Oh no, she's hot. I mean, it is true. I mean, no doubt. A A Abigail Shapiro is very, very pretty. It's true. It's true. It's just true. But unfortunately, the words that she puts out on her channel are not. So let's have a listen. Let's have a quick listen because I want to hear just how let's let's see if we can find out how close to Dennis Prager's tra absurd sexist traditionalism some of her content comes because I have a feeling it's going to come terrifyingly close. Let's have a listen. You ready? Let's do it. Hello, beautiful ladies, and welcome to today's video, oh, thank you. where we're going to be- Damn, thank you. Holy shit. I didn't expect that. Oh, that was very nice. ...be talking about why you should stop hooking up. If you're a woman in 2020, you've heard you need to be empowered. You do you. The patriarchy is holding you back. True! True! Holy shit, true! She's missing teeth. She has no teeth. Ah. Sleep with who you want, when you want. Yeah, but absolutely. But this is 100%. a bunch of lies. Maybe you want to hook up with a guy because you care about him and you don't want to let him get away. Sleeping with him is the easiest way for him to take you and your feelings for granted. Hold
did you see what I said? Remember when I said that this was going to basically be the same basic arguments that Dennis Prager were was making, but like dressed up slightly, um, slightly more. Yeah, true, Zarel. True cook capitalism. Woo! It's a ladies' world now. Woo! Holding out will tell you whether he's willing to wait and will tell him that you're worth waiting for. I've seen it happen before. Maybe you want to have sex with a guy you really like and can see having a future with. Hooking up with him could mask all of the problems in your relationship that would lead to your eventual breakup and just prolong the inevitable. Sex will only muddy the waters and prevent you from making a clear-headed decision. Maybe you want to- Wait, what? What do you mean? What do you mean sex will muddy the waters and prevent you from making a clear decision? Sex is a part of relationships. What the fuck are you talking about, Abby? Sex is a part of relationships. It doesn't muddy the waters to have sex with somebody. It doesn't muddy the waters to like having sex with somebody. That's a factor in why you would consider being in a relationship with somebody. One of many, of course. Yeah, oh, it's, this is, yeah, this is literally post-nut clarity. This is, this is literally like no fap shit. What the fuck? Have sex with someone because you're lonely and it will fill <laughs> up the time until you meet the right person. Having sex- Wait, what? What? It's such an unhealthy look at things. Wait, what do you, what do you mean? People have relationships all the time. Sometimes you just have a small casual relationship and it's really fucking good. Sometimes you have a relationship that's just like, hey, this relationship is like really like we're not like super involved in one another's lives, but we enjoy having sex and we enjoy talking about stuff. That's perfectly fine. What the fuck? Okay. With the wrong person is the easiest way to prolong your loneliness since you'll be too distracted to find Mr. Right. What? Oh, sorry. You heard it here, folks. You heard it fucking here. If you're having sex with somebody, you can't think about anything else. You can't participate. You can't have any other relationships. If you have sex with a guy, all other relationships automatically turn off and your brain can't focus on anything but the guy. Maybe you want to have sex because, hey, it's fun. You know what? True. It is fun. It is fun. Safe sex, guys. It's not fun. STDs, pregnancy scares, waking up next to cuck capitalism I'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna lie there's a bit of there's a bit of a feeling there I I I my there's a bit of a ping on the radar I can't say much because I am very very confused by the hyper conservative thing but all I'm gonna say is that this face right here that's making my that's making the, the that's making the old gaydar go bing bing bing. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Someone you have no emotional connection with and Wait a minute. Now let's get Pause it. Hold on a second. Nobody said anything about having no emotional connection. You can have an emotional connection with somebody that you hook up with. You 100% can. In fact, hookups often become relationships. What the fuck? Get the record straight. I'm not saying sex is bad. In fact, yeah, you sex are. is wonderful. But sex with the wrong person is not. Sex by itself is nothing. It's That's not true. That's objectively not true. Sex is something. What the fuck? That is a nonsense statement. Come on now. It's regret when the act is done and sadness knowing nothing else will come of it. Wait, what? If you have... Yes, that will happen if you have really... If you have fucking super super bad expectations yeah of course there's always the possibility that if you have very different um oh shit i should change the stream title hold on here we go there we go there i changed it S having unhealthy expectations can in any activity can lead you to feeling disappointed afterwards like for example imagine if you order a pizza from domino's expecting that you're going to get a pizza and then you get domino's and you're like oh fuck and you take a bite and you're like this tastes like shit that that's a perfect example of 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 a time where your expect your incorrect expectations led to you being disappointed. The same thing can happen <laughs> with sex, uh, as it turns out. As it turns out, um, 
I mean, true. But keep in mind, though, Retcon, that when I order Domino's, I expect Domino's. If I expected pizza, then I would be disappointed. But I don't. I know what I'm getting. I know I'm basically getting a um, a loaf of plant matter um, that has been coated in garlic and cheese um, and immediately turns to stone the moment that it cools at all. Papa Murphy's? Yo, seriously? Papa Murphy's god tier. Papa Murphy's is one of... is fucking so good. Literally, they make, like... It's take and bake, so you bake it on your own at home, but their recipe for their crust, for their fucking ingredients, the pizzas they make, legit. Their deep dish pizzas, fucking god tier. I will die on a hill for Papa Murphy's. And you can buy Papa Murphy's on EBT. So if you have Snap, if you are in a low income situation, you can buy pizza at, EB at, at Papa Murphy's. You can buy fucking pizza at Papa Murphy's. No problem. 100% legally. It's amazing. Yes. Oh, shit. Really? 100%. Literally a lifesaver. Fucking Papa Murphy's has fed me in times of need so many times. I love Papa Murphy's. And their baked chicken bacon ranch pizza deep dish is one of the best, is literally one of the best pizzas I've fucking ever had. Like, from a place where it's pre-made. Like, not obviously, I've had really fucking good, like, top-tier pizza. But I'm talking about, like, actual pizza that you can feasibly get any night. Yeah, absolutely. See, Cuck Capitalism? You, they've got your back. Fucking Papa Murphy's got your back. It is the true Papa. Papa Murphy, you see, there's Papa John's. And Papa John's is a pretender to the th to the Papa throne. Papa John's is bougie as fuck, has a statue of himself in his own house, and uh, pretends to order soda pops by helicopter for his son to his, like, $50 billion mansion. Papa Murphy's, you can... They, they teach you how to bake it yourself with the instructions. They... Uh, they, they, you can call in and you don't have to pay in advance if you don't want to. You can pay when you go in the store, which is easier sometimes if you're using EBT. And they accept EBT. So they, they serve the working man and the poor of this country. I don't often stand for brands, but Papa Murphy's is a brand I can get behind. Fuck yeah. And no, no joke though. I'm not kidding you. Their pizzas, they're take and bake, which makes you think, oh, it must be shit. Because you know, if you get a pizza at Walmart, you're probably like, oh, those are not that great. But Papa Murphy's pizza is 100% great. Thank you for the follow, by the way, Manga Preacher. Deeply appreciate it. Yeah, their pizza is really good quality. They use good cheese. They use good fucking ingredients. Also, like, they put fucking sun-dried tomatoes. They've got fucking herb blends and shit. They actually season their pizzas. So good. Yeah, the people that work there are really cool. It's always, yeah, it's all... Always, 100% always either a hippie guy that's super high or an old lady. Yeah, I'm, I'm shilling for Papa Murphy's, but I'm sorry. Papa Murphy's, I stand. Yeah, I think I think it was a pop Papa Murphy Papa Murphy it's like the fight from uh it was like the fight from from uh They Live, you know, in the back alley, Papa Murphy came out on top 100%. Anyway, sorry. Um what were we talking about? Oh yeah, we were talking about expectations. <laughs> we were talking about expectations. Yes, as it turns out, if you go into sec if if you go into a hookup Huck, uh, oh my God. If you go into a hookup expecting more than a hookup, you might end up being disappointed. And that's why it's important to have realistic expectations for all relationships, including hookups. If you hook up with somebody, you should recognize that, hey, unless you've talked about it, you know, there's not necessarily tr true marinara, true Zanzi, true Windleby Dazzler. Um... But um, unless unless you go into a hookup having had like an understanding that there's an interest in a relationship beyond that, please temper your expectations for a hookup. Like that's an okay, it's an okay thing to have a hookup and just have it be a hookup. You got, I got you, Silfco. I got you. Anyway. I got you, Puff. Aw, good night, Silfco. Have a wonderful night. I hope you rest really well. 
Ah, uh, yes, true, Zarel. I would love to. I, I, I would love. I would love to order the Supreme Forbidden Pizza with attic insulation from Domino's. I'm pretty sure that's pretty close to what they use. Um, literally though, like Domino's uses like a fuck ton of filler in their pizza. It's terrible. Much love, self. Thanks for coming and watching. Um, Zanzi says, in my experience, the disappointment at the end of a hookup isn't the sex. It's at the miscommunication, your expect expectations being contrary to reality. Um, yeah, absolutely. Me too. Um, I always try to have as, as healthy expectations with a relationship as I can, and it doesn't always work out. Relationships are sometimes messy. It's just a reality of life. Just like nothing can be perfect, there are going to be times where there's a miscommunication of expectations. And guess what? It's not the end of the world. And it, it doesn't mean you shouldn't have sex anymore. It just means you should try to have realistic expectations about sex. Yeah, and sometimes it's just a bad match. Like, like these people have this view. Okay, this is the thing. Again, remember like I said, there's going to be a lot of the same messaging from Dennis Prager in this message, just like dressed up more nicely because it's delivered by um, Abby Shapiro. The same, the same, I, I, I continue and, and hold that position because keep in mind that when they say that like, there's like disappointment and all this shit, it's because they expect, they, they expect every single sexual encounter, um, to either be a part of a marriage or to be building towards marriage. They don't believe that like you can have a relation that you should have a relationship where it's just a bad match. They believe you should basically always be angling for marriage. Bam, Simpington, I got you. There's those dabs. Boom. True, Lord Simpington. Ab ab definitively true. Absolutely true. We can all agree that that's the case. All right, let's get back into it. Let's dive back into it. There we go, Zanzi. You get one too. Hoop, hoop, hoop. I'm doing so many dabs. Love, marriage, a family, a future all fit in with sex and make sex so much more than a good. physical act. You know how you crave ice cream, but if you ate ice cream all the time, your healthy lifestyle would go out the window? It's the same with sex. That healthy lifestyle you want disappears when you have sex with anyone and everyone, wherever and whenever. There's a reason- Wait, what? Hold on a second. I missed something. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. With anyone and everyone, wherever and whenever. That healthy lifestyle you want disappears when you have sex with anyone and everyone, wherever and whenever. Wait, what the fuck? Who said anything about that? Anyone and everyone, wherever, whenever? Do they think that like a woman who hooks up one time is suddenly just like a fuck machine that walks outside and just literally fucks anyone they see anywhere at any given moment? Oh my God. These people... Like, this is the thing. Again, I told you, I told you we were going to see the same basic messaging. They, these people have the most unhealthy relationship to sex you could possibly imagine. The most unhealthy. They think that there's two options. You're married to one person, and if they die, you never have sex again. Or you are literally a constantly, a being of constant fuckery. Yeah, this, this, true, true, Windleby. This is the cock carousel shit. Oh, shit, Spectrum Melodies. Hell yeah. Undercuts, very comfy. Uh, possibly my favorite type of hairstyle for myself. Yeah, exactly, Marinara. This, that's ultimately what they're getting at. With their, 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 uh, they're not saying it outright, but they're basically saying that sex should be for one purpose, which is reinforcing the marriage and having babies. I guess that's two purposes, but they kind of wrap it together. A conservative with binary thinking? Imagine my shock. There's a reason that women who wait until marriage to have sex are happier on average than women who do not. Damn. I wonder what that reason is. I wonder if they go into it in this actual article. Actually, I don't care because I'm not going to fucking fact check every single stupid claim in this video when they make claims like, uh, oh, your entire, your hope for, uh, for a happy life goes out the window when you hook up because you're going to start having sex with anyone, anywhere, at any time, given, no matter what. Zarel says, I can't stop hooking up with everyone I ever meet. I can't stop. I went out for coffee and I told the bar barista I'd like a mocha and we were banging as I typed this. My life is miserable. I can't stop meeting new people and having all this sex. Oh my God. 
Oh yeah, Sean did do a video on this. Hell yeah, that's probably a better one. I'm not gonna, I've, I've done enough debunking. I'm not gonna fucking debunk this shit. Let's be real. Here's what happens. This article says fewer sex partners means a happier marriage. Um, there's like a million things that go into it. First of all, fucking people who are married, um, like if you're married, that means you probably have a proclivity to, mon to monogamy. Um, which means that if you have fewer pe sex partners, you're probably happier in that marriage because you already have a predisposition towards being m monogamous. Um, there's probably a whole bunch of fucking things. It's it's literally, it ha I, I don't know, whatever. I don't fucking care. This is just some random article that they flashed up on the screen like they always do. This is one of their favorite things to do, by the way, is they post the title of an article and none of the details about it. A good guy will wait for you no matter what. Really? No matter what? What if you blow his dick off? Will he still wait for you if he's good? What if you literally... <laughs> I can't stop getting invited to orgies and taking up hobbies and, uh, hobbies and home decor advice from all the bedrooms of people I have sex with. Oh my god. I want to be that happy. Happy lady? This is like almost... Almost... <laughs> yep, the gay frog water. I love Zanzi's frog. It's so good. Do not. A good guy will wait for you, no matter what. A bad guy won't. When you wait, you respect yourself and your body enough to sh- Yeah, get this. See, remember what- Again, I've, I know I've said this like 20 times. I should stop saying it. But this is the thing from the Prager thing. Um, a guy- Like, a, a guy is bad- if he, a guy is bad, if he won't wait, despite the fact that it's implied that he's like a sexual beast, if he won't wait for marriage, the guy must be bad. It's not, it couldn't possibly be that the guy just has different priorities than you. It's that he's morally bad. He's morally bad if he doesn't want to marry you before having sex with you. It's morally bad. Do you see where we've gone from her saying she doesn't hate sex to now implying that a man who isn't willing to wait for marriage is a bad person? No, this is her post-nut clarity. Oh my god. That's possible. Oh, Well, that's that's fine. That's perfectly fine, Gary. Gary and, and Kellis. Like, some people are able... Like, there are... There are good and healthy religious institutions. Um, but, like, just make sure you're there. Uh, just make sure you're comfortable with it. And that it's benefiting you. The last girl I had sex with crocheted the blanket. Now I'm learning to crochet. Having sex before I nailed myself to marriage. 2.5 kids, white picket fence, and a 9 to 5 dis uh, dead end career has ruined my life. Hey, Abby, I got married and the sex is still really bad. What do I do? Uh, uh-oh, nothing. You better, you better deal with it. That's what, that's when the Prager article comes in. Once you're married, then, then you break out the Prager article. Share it with someone on a healthy timeline. You're just waiting to have that ice cream until the moment is right. So listen. If you do that, the ice cream will melt. Checkmate. Checkmate, Christians. If you wait, if you're holding your ice cream and you don't eat it, it will melt. Checkmate ice cream. Checkmate fucking Christians. Listen up, ladies. Destroyed. Let's be classic. Stop hooking up. It might be harder now. Whoa, hey! Wait a minute. She never made an argument for why you should stop hooking up. She said sex is fine, but now she says hookups are totally bad. Holy shit. I'm lying. You're just waiting to have that ice cream until the moment is right. So listen up, ladies. Oof. Let's be classic. Stop hooking up. It might be harder now, but it will be better in the long run. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Please subscribe to my channel and blog if you haven't already. All right, all right. It's time for the counter shill. Uh, look at this. Holy shit. The last 30 seconds of the video are a shill. Holy shit. All right, everybody, anybody else out there got those bits, subs, Streamlabs dono with the link below, any of it, all that generously appreciated so that I can wade through more classically Abby and Dennis Prig. What am I doing with my life? Anybody, any oil princes, princes who want to give a thousand gifted subs to me right now, deeply appreciated. You could support my channel and make me the predominant um, leftist, React Andy panel goer on Twitch. Oh shit! Oh shit, it worked! Fuck yeah! Hey, thank you so much, figuratively nobody. Holy shit, five fucking gifted subs. Thank you so much. That is in incredibly generous. Oh my god, everybody, please, please make sure that you give 
your thanks to the wonderful figuratively nobody who has been so generous as to gift five tier tier one subs to this channel in addition take a look at this look at what all of you have access to you now have access to pompo you now have access to kieris you now have access to i think you have access to the suchinoko and you have access to rathu look at all these beautiful emojis you can fly up on the screen and it is all possible thanks to viewers like none other than figuratively nobody figuratively nobody you are literally somebody to me thank you so much very appreciate it Hey, thank you for the bits. So much generosity. Thank you so much, History Boff. I deeply appreciate the bits. Holy shit. Amazing. Also, if any of you who are here in my chat have not yet joined my Discord, I urge you, the link is right below. You can click on it and you can join my Discord and join us for amazing chat. Yeah, it is an amazing... I mean, basically any freeze frame in this video, I'm not going to lie, has been pretty good. I will that, say that um, she's very expressive. I felt this video was really boring, but she is really expressive and she has a really like bright expression. And I, I think that's a good thing. I think that's a good feature. We can say something nice. Yeah, she photos well. Absolutely. 100%. That's good. And that's not just commenting on her appearance either. That's like a skill. Like having good... Like having good like... um facial expressions while you're on video is absolutely a skill it, it's just like i don't know it's just not the only skill yeah she does kind of look like a disney pixar character part of that is the makeup though because they give her this like uh this like bronzing over her eyes um but yeah oh we got a flath you we got a flath you yes it is true it is in indeed true Mil milton nasty mento it is indeed true that ben shapiro's sister is a real person and not a deep fake of ben um, what sort of thought, Reza Sutra? You can try. Is it going to get me TOS? <laughs> uh, I disagree, Zanzi. Come on, don't be so mean to yourself. You look